Hey everybody and welcome to Adventures with Peps. We are on issue 41 and 42 of the Imperium magazine, which is of course all about, if I can, uh, whoa, that was the wrong magazine, 71, here we go. It's all about the Lich Guard. So I'm going to swap camera view and we'll get straight into it. So here we go, issue 71. Let's get my shoulder out of the picture. Can't believe we're on 71, 72, so that's uh, 18, 19, 18, 18, <laughs> 18 magazines left. I can't do math today, guys. Ridiculous. Right. This was a two-parter, as I mentioned in the opener. And we get five Lich Guard. Obviously, the first book is going to be the how to build. The second is going to be the how to paint. We're going to break this into two sections. So we go over the first one. We'll do the paint guide, then we'll look at this one. <clears throat> so let's dive on in. The Lich Guard build guide, a rogue trader story, and the war for Ramus continues. What do we got? We got the Le Lich Guard, Dark Imperium, Hellbrack and Grimaldus, the Emperor's Justice, a double crossed Orkin and Anraka. I'm going to go with Lich Guard how to build, and then ninth edition rules. So, there they are in all their golden glory. I'm only going to paint one model this week. Uh, the goal is, I've kind of decided moving forward that when I have a squad like this, I'm going to start trying to do different paint schemes. So, you'll see these guys popping up in the following months as I paint them up in different dynasties. But uh, they are armed with the War Scythe got the Guardian Protocols, they look after the Necron Lord, and they have better armor plate than their inferiors, let's call them. We then get the, the classic RPG page, where you can do damage charts, the gifts that they have, the glyph if you want to make up one for them. We then have a little backstory on the Dark Imperium, so that's the 10,000 years have passed since the Emperor ascended to the Golden Throne. 10,000 years of hardship, toil, loss and horror. Doom and darkness now envelops the Imperium. So basically, no matter where you are in the galaxy, there is war. There's always war. War is the norm for these poor people. It is a dark, dark place. Talks a bit about the safety of ignorance and not knowing that chaos exists. Whoa! All right, hopefully I fixed the uh, lighting issue there. Uh, so swiftly moving on, we got Helbrack, one page for the High Marshal of the Black Templar and how he's got a little bit of a rivalry with Imotech. And you can't have him without Grimaldus, the hero of Armageddon. He is the High cha Chaplain of the Black Templars. He's absolutely badass in every story I've read. Every story, he is absolute badass. We then get a Black Templar story versus some orcs, dealing with uh, a besieged hive world, dealing with rampaging orcs and Black Templars. We get a lovely a two-page spread of some models. The Black Templars do look so cool, and this is older Black Templars as well. The new stuff that has come out is absolutely stunning models. That's actually a decent sized story, it's four pages long. We then get a little rope trader page. We get the first officer navigator, which I assume this is his story. We learn a little bit about Drakari raiders, the witches and the homunculi. Splinter weapons get a quick mention. Then we have the orc freebooters, which look so cool in that picture. Don't know how well you'll see it. I had to, see I made it darker and now it's too dark. I will learn how to use this camera one day. Eldari Corsairs, Traitors and Renegades, a little bit of fluff on everything. Talks about this rogue trader who is from the uh it's the RPG campaign. I forgot what it was called now. Was it Rogue Stars? If you remember, drop me a comment below. We then get some Necron fluff finally. Orc and the Diviner. 
single eye of Orkin, the diviner, reveals to him the secrets of time, space, and fate itself. Oh, that is a pretty cool picture. I don't know much about him. I know he's possibly got a book out now. I'm going to have to learn a bit more about that guy. And then Anrak the Traveller. I'm, I'm going with that. That's probably not how you pronounce his name in any way, shape, or form. But he is striking down a veteran of the Ultramarines there. It's not the best piece of artwork. He doesn't look any more special than a normal Lich Guard model. But he is pretty cool. We then get the How to Build, which is just two pages. Very simple. And then we finish off the magazine with War in the Dark, where the forces are pressing deeper into the subterranean lair. The Necrons are trying to get the restoration process going, and the Imperial forces are trying to destroy it. A pretty simple one. The battle takes place in the Stasis Chamber. It's a take and hold progressive mission. So you can get maximum of 15 if you get one or more objective markers, two or more objective markers, and they control more objective markers than their opponents. So it's 555. Five, five, five. If you get all of them, it's 15. Secondary objective, the stasis banks progressive. Each time a unit from your army successfully completes the following action, you get three additional victory points. One unit from your army starts to perform this action at the end of their movement phase. If the action is completed at the end of the next command phase, they score three points. Very simple. Pretty standard play. I like simple. We then get the advert. And of course, 72 will be the paint guide. So let's get into my paint guide before we go into that magazine. Whoa. Hey everybody and welcome to Adventures with Peps. Today we are painting a Lich Guard model. So who are the Lich Guard? The Lich Guard are the wardens of the nobility said to utterly dedicate themselves to their charges. Whilst most Necrons wear a suit of living metal, the Lich Guard wear huge suits of ancient armour. Now, as you can see, I have primed the model black. Very exciting, I know. This model actually has quite a lot of details compared to the Necron Warriors and the Immortals. So I'm going to do a couple of extra steps than I would normally for my, uh, my Dynasty. So kicking things off with the Lead Belcher. This is a very heavy overbrush. The lead belcher going on as you can see just gonna hit the body the arms the weapon i'm just gonna cover everything in this it's a very simple step i do it with all my necrons takes like two seconds and as you can see gives it a nice finish at this point i wasn't sure if i should highlight it these are an elite unit they deserve a little bit extra time and patience but I think with the silver, I didn't want to go the extra step. I wanted to keep it a little bit dark, a little bit moody. These guys have been underground for quite a while. <laughs> they're, uh, I always forget how to say their cult, uh, their dynasty. They're the, uh, the ones with the destroyer cult that is very prominent amongst them. Uh, I want to say Novok dynasty. Correct me if I'm wrong. Something like that anyway. Uh, it's the guys who have the red. <laughs> That's probably the easiest way to say it. So I'm going to be picking out the red colours pretty soon. Just got to make sure I've got all this silver down. And I'm going to be using Contrast Paint Flesh Tira for that. Right, I think we are pretty good here. Right, with that dry, I actually changed my mind. And I'm going to grab the Nasdrag Yellow. I'm going to get the bronze areas done first. The reason I changed my mind at the last minute... I thought getting this bronze sections done will make my life a lot easier. I know the red contrast paint that I'm planning on using is very strong. If I flood into the bronze areas, I'm going to struggle to cover it. It's going to be actually quite a pain to cover it, so I'm going to get this step done first. It will force me to be neater when I'm doing the red. So I'm going to pick out a few key areas on this model. So obviously this uh, plate mail loincloth that he's got going on and then going to pick out the helmet and slightly around the neck area 
it has what looks like a necklace area that I'm going to try and pick out. I'm also going to pick out the, the glyph logo on the front chest. So while I'm doing that, we'll jump forward a little bit. Right, with the bronze drawing, I grab the flesh tier red. This is the, my go-to contrast paint for these Necrons. I'm going to pick out quite a lot actually on this model. Normally I just do shoulder pads and call it a day, maybe the head on a couple of them. But this time we're going to do the hip guards that he's got on the side, his chest plate, shoulder pads. I'm also going to drop the bloody model. Ugh. Um, <laughs> Got to try and not make a mess. We're also going to get the chest. I've forgotten what I was talking about now. Uh, chest, hip plates, shoulder pads, all the good stuff. He's going to have a good layer of red. Now, I mentioned earlier about doing highlights. I am going to highlight up the red just to make him look a bit brighter. He'll stand out then a bit more against his uh, companions. I'm also going to probably highlight some blue later as well. So when this video is over, you will see this is probably one of my most brightest Necrons, and I really like the way he looks. So we'll just work our way around. Currently on location, I'm not going to say where, I'm in a secret base. Annoyingly, the internet at my house died, making it almost impossible to record my voice and edit and all that good stuff, so I'm currently at the in-laws house, which is a little weird to be sat here painting. But it is quite a nice environment. And there we go, the red is now down. We've got the bronze. He is looking pretty damn good. So at this point, he is free colours. He is tournament legal. I personally would not put him on the table looking like this, but you could. You could. Next up is the Telesar blue that I mentioned earlier. This is going to be another colour that I plan on highlighting up. I'm going to use it on his staff. I was looking at pictures on the internet. There's so many of this dynasty and ways people have painted them. Some real cool ones with uh, white face masks, which I thought looked very nice, but looked a bit too skeleton-y for me. I want these guys to look royal, but I did notice a recurring theme of blue on them. So I decided to pop blue on the staff. Up next was the Ceramite White. I'm going to try and pick out his eyeballs, which are teeny, teeny, tiny. Uh, I hate that it's so tiny. I've got a tiny brush and it feels like I've overloaded it with paint, so I'm a little bit nervous. We're also going to pick out his blade. Uh, and anything that I want to do in Tesseract green, so the gem on his belt. And of course the blade on the weapon. I'm trying to be careful here as much as possible. Really watered down the white because I didn't want it to be two in your face, but I think I watered it down a little bit too much. But hopefully it will give us a good effect because some of that silver is going to come through underneath it. Give the weapon a little bit of a metallic -y look. If it comes out looking really good, I'm going to claim that was what I was trying to do from the beginning. If it looks like crap, then we're going to blame the white paint and not me. So either way, I'm going to win out. I can't believe we're on issue 77, I think, so we've only got 13 issues left. I'm actually going to miss this Imperium series. As you can see, I grabbed the Tesseract Glow. Now, when this series finished, they did launch the Age of Sigma one, and I was tempted. But I talked myself out of it in the end, because I didn't see any real need to have two fantasy armies like that. I don't foresee me playing Age of Sigma anytime soon. I, if I can't play Warhammer 40k, which I enjoy very often, there's no chance I'm going to get to Age of Sigma. So that would just be buying stuff for the sake of doing it. If there's models I want to paint in the future on this channel, I'm just going to go out and buy them. That makes more sense. But I do hear there's a Kill Team version that's been tested. Whether it's coming out or not, I don't know. And if it does come out in Canada, it's going to be probably five years in the future because we're so slow to get them. But that could tempt me. If Kill Team 1 does come out, that is going to be one that I will pick up. The idea of having all the, like a mini faction of each faction actually really 
calls out to me. With the big uh, GW price hike as well that happened. And all the people that I've seen complaining about it. I'm kind of happy that I've got a stockpile of figures. Like I said, I don't really play the game anymore. But I do enjoy painting the figures. So having a nice little pile of figures here. It's definitely made my life easier. I then grabbed the Mephiston Red. And we're going to start highlighting the armor up. With the chest, I'm going to... I start off doing some line edging, but I am going to just completely fill it in, I think. I'm just going to see how this looks to begin with, and quickly and quite soon afterwards, I decide to just fill it in. But the hip guards and the shoulder pads, I'm just going to do line highlights on. This really brightens up the model and makes it pop, which I think it's deserving. The Lich Guard are the elite. They're the bodyguards, they're the protectors of the Overlord. They should look a little bit fancier than the rank and file. So there you go, as you can see I've filled in the chest. He is really popping. I really like the look of this model. I'm not 100% sold on the weapon. Uh, I'm going to leave it as is. But I'm probably going to go back later and put a wash on it. So if in the final video where it's doing the glamour shots there's a wash on it, you know why. I think I might go with Orc Flesh. It's just too limey green for me. Uh, right now we're doing Kalgar Blue. Which is highlighting up his staff. Leaving the contrast in the deeper darker areas. I think this is going to look really nice. Let's have a look. Skipping forward. I love doing voiceovers. Because I kind of get confused. At one point I'll talk as if I'm painting. Next minute I'm talking with all the knowledge in the world, so I do apologise if that annoys you guys. It's just how I talk. Right, here's the glamour shots, and then we'll get back to the magazine. Hopefully that was a half decent transition. So you've seen the paint guide now. And we are moving in to 72. Inside we get... Oh, we get some more Necrom knowledge. Zandrek and the Illuminator. We also get Dark Angels, Azrael and Lazarus. Uh, we get Space Marine Vehicles Part 4. The Festering Hordes Part 2. How to Paint the Lich Guard. And then some ninth edition rules. So these look pretty badass. I remember seeing the models. It's weird. I've become a Necron fan purely because of this magazine. But uh, I really like the pose. He, he looks very, you can tell he's the Lord and he's just the servant slash bodyguard. So Zandrek, Necrons who hold the rank of Nemesaur. A great military responsibility. Though left quite insane, Nemesaur Zandrak still strives to fulfill his duties, assisted by his bodyguard. Oh, okay, so he's like a high-ranking military lord. And then this is his bodyguard. So we get a page on him. And then we get Illuminator Cesraz. We actually get the model. Of this in this magazine that's gonna be pretty cool the model looks amazing I'm excited to build it as well but he just looks so cool he is a bio architect and hyper technological visisector who seeks to unpick the secrets of life itself oh terrifying absolute nightmare villain-esque creation if I can get my words out then we get Azrael from the Dark Angels, pretty cool character. He has a great model these days as well. And Lazarus, the master of Fifth Company. I adore the model that GW have made of him. It is a model that I would like to collect and paint at some point. We then have Space Marine Vehicles and Flyers. I love this little budgie. I'm going to call it the budgie. It's a shame that that's technically now Firstborn, so they're going to get phased out at some point, I would imagine. Which is a real shame. 
Then we have the Stormhawk, the Stormwolf, and the Dark Ravenwing Dark Talon. They got some cool crafts, don't get me wrong. It's just a shame that this is all classified firstborn. So it's all going to disappear at some point. Uh, the Land Speeder, very iconic. We got the Tornado Land Speeder and then the Typhoon. And it finishes it off with the Primaris version of the Land Speeder. So you got the Hellstrike, where it's got what looks like an Assault Cannon and some Auto Cannons. Then we got the couple of Missile variants, Thunder Strike and Hammer Strike. We then get part two of the Festering Horde story. It's surprising that it took so long to get the second part. Great picture of a Grey Knight there. Then we get the paint guide. So they do it in their classic scheme that they're using for the magazine, which is very golden-esque. I'm going to have to create my own version of that paint scheme on the channel. But it's not hugely out there. If you follow their scheme, you should have something that looks pretty nice by the end of it. And then we're into some defunct uh, Edition 9 rules. So you get some Warlord traits for the Adeptus Serratus. Rules for the Lich Guard, seven power points for five models is not bad, not bad at all. Then we have Locating the Gate. The battle for Ramus can only be won if the flow of Necron reinforcements into the system is halted. So the Necrons are trying to secure their conduits so they can get reinforcements, and the Imperium are trying to stop them, nice and simple. It's a veteran mission, map the tomb. It is, oh, look at this. Player A gets two deployment zones. You each get two deployment zones, that's fun. A multi-prong assault. Both players place half their units in each deployment zone and then take and hold. Very simple, like the last one, you get five for each one you can complete. So control one or more objectives, control two, control more objectives than your opponent. Then there's some secondary, which is scanning, which very similar to the last one, to be fair. So that it's just the deployment that's different and a few more chances to get objectives. We then get the classic advert. We finish off the magazine. So the next one that I'm going to try and do is issue 73, Heavy Destroyer. And then we get this Fire Strike Servo Turret afterwards. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Quick, dirty done and dusted and i will see you soon for the next one as always cheers for watching